It's becoming the new normal to wake up and get negative news out of Europe and watch the market pull back on this. But our market's down only about five, five and a half percent so far since the peak this year. Is the pressure from Europe going to cause another 2010, 2011, where we see a sell of like 20? Well, I mean, you know, obviously we don't know. It depends on what happens with Greece, um, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, are they do, uh, do they uh, come out of the EU or not? Um, I would say this is one big difference between this year and, and last year, and that is that you've got global monetary policy e easing. Um, Brazil is lowering rates. China, I thought the big news over the weekend was, you know, they lowered their triple R, and they're going to do more, and they can mm -hmm. because their inflation has gotten under control. Uh, so we expect more. Uh, the Fed has basically said that they will backstop you know, our economy. So uh, you know, that's a big difference than where we were a year ago in terms of the global easing. Um, so you know, it's, it's obviously, it's, you know, every day it's, there's like a new piece of news with regards to Greece and Europe. But we look at some of the high quality companies with strong uh, stories um, and dividends, and you know, we pick on the, on the weakness. I mean, the, we raised cash in March to 13%, and we've had anywhere between 13 and 17% of cash throughout the last month and a half. So um, we're, we're picking, but we're picking uh, very slowly. And you, know, you mentioned the corporate world is doing pretty well. We just right. got out of earnings season, or we're coming to an end. Um, are you surprised that we haven't decoupled more from Europe, the European markets? Not really. I mean, you know, I think right now we kind of have an, have an absence of news, right? We're done with earnings. I mean, we'll get retail this week, and I think that's going to mm -hmm. be pretty big. But so now you're kind of hostage to the macro numbers, right? And the macro numbers in the U.S. have actually peaked. They, if you look at all the industrial numbers, mm -hmm. uh, if you look at the housing numbers, they're still okay. They're still in recovery mode, but we're not accelerating uh, as, we, as we once were. So, so now you're at kind of the mercy of the big picture, and then you have this Europe overhang as well. Again, I kind of go back to, to your point of earnings. Who, who reported really good numbers? Who had good things to say? Who benefits from lower energy prices, by the way, with oil yeah. coming down? So you have to look at some of these things, and, um, and, and, that's, why, and that's why we're buying, because we are, we are going back and reanalyzing, if you will, um, the fundamentals. So what stocks are you buying? What are the quality names you're looking at? Are you only looking at domestic? Um, what, what is your strategy? Yeah, I mean, well, you, what you, you would think we would buy just U.S., but I think that if China continues to ease, you really want to have some exposure there, too. So you have mm -hmm. to have a barbell, and that's what we've done all year. We've had a lot of industrials, as you know. We've talked about the Eatons. Uh, we, we don't own Cooper, but we like Cooper a lot. Um, even some of the uh, HVAC names are doing well, like Lennox and that kind of thing. Um, but we also like the beneficiaries of lower oil, and that if that is TJX or if that is Kraft or Coke, um, and then kind of sprinkle in some financials because they've been just destroyed in the last couple of days. So we've been buying AIG. This market is stock tickers market. Stocks have rallied this year. We're coming into a Monday where we're going to.